Hello everybody, it's Monica here again. Today is the 33rd Sunday of the year. In fact, we're almost at the very end of the church year. The new church year will begin from the first week of Advent, which is in two weeks time. So we've just got today and next Sunday, Christ the King left in this old year. And some might say that's a good thing that we're near the end of this very challenging time, this challenging year. But first of all, we're going to light our candle. because, As we know, that just reminds us that Jesus is here listening and watching all that we do. And we're going to make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, t today we're going to be talking about how Jesus gives us lovely, lovely gifts, lovely blessings, and how he wants us to pass them on, to carry on his kindness, carry on his blessings. And so we're going to look at the story of the talents. But first, I'd just like to make a little prayer to ask Jesus to forgive us all the times that perhaps we could have done things a little bit better our sorry prayer and today we're going to do the act of contrition and for those of you who've done your first forgiveness you'll know this prayer but those of you who haven't if you'd listen and see if you can join in where you can but if you hold in your heart the idea that you would like to do better or you'd like to know how you can be even kinder even more wonderful than you already are and we ask Jesus to show us the way. So, oh my God, because you are so very good and kind to us, we are very sorry that we have not been our best selves. And we ask you to forgive us for that, to show us the way to be our best selves. And we know that way your love is, is where we feel your love, we can always do better. Thank you. Now we're going to say the Alleluia, which is just our wonderful introduction to our gospel today. Alleluia, Alleluia, hear the Lord, hear the Lord. Alleluia, hear the Lord, stand and praise him. The gospel today is from Matthew. And it's about a gentleman who tries to get his servants, the people who works for him, to see if they can be trusted with something of great value, to see if they can use it wisely, if they can help him to reach more parts of his, his land and his, to grow his land, to make his land even better. And through this story, Jesus wanted to pass on how he wanted everybody who had been given blessings and gifts by God, things that are of great value to you and to God. He values them highly and he hopes you will too. But he wants you to use them to make God's land grow, to make God's love grow all around us. Jesus told the disciples, a master who was leaving his house to go on a very long journey decided before he left to trust some of his money to his servants rather than take it all with him. To the first servant he gave 500 talents. Talents was a, like a, a type of money. And this was a lot of money. To the next servant he gave 200 talents. And to the final servant, he gave a hundred talents. And he asked them to use them and look wisely and look after what they had been given. After many months, in fact, it might have even been years, he returned home and called his servants to him and asked them to what they had done with the wealth with the, they had been trusted with. The first servant he had given 500 talents to. He had told his master he had invested it wisely 
and it had made 500 more. And so he gave back 1,000 talents to his master. And his master said, what a good servant you are. Because you've been trusted in this matter, I will trust you in, with even more important things in the future. The second servant came forward and he had been given 200 talents. He again had used the money wisely and indeed had grown that pot of money to be 400 talents. And again, the master was very pleased and told him what a good servant he was and that he would be trusted again with even more important things. Finally, the third servant came. He had been given the smallest amount of money, but he said, he told his master that because his master had a reputation of being very strict and having very high standards, which he didn't like if people didn't reach them, he didn't want to risk losing any of the money. So he buried the money in a safe place and had only just dug it up now that the master was back. And so he handed him over the original hundred talents. Nothing was missing, but there was not one penny more to give back to the master. He thought he would be praised, but to his surprise, the master did not praise him. In fact, he was really angry. He said, you selfish, lazy servant. You have not worked at all with the gifts I have given you and you have produced nothing extra to make my land and my kingdom any bigger. So go and never come back here again. I need servants who will take my gifts and make them work for my good. I am going to share that money that you wasted and give it to my other servants and you will be trusted with nothing in the future. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now this sounds like this master is quite, quite a harsh man, but perhaps he isn't really. Perhaps what he was trying to get his servants to do was to be worthy of the trust that had been placed on them. He'd gone away and left them with an awful lot of money. He wanted to know that they would be sensible and do good with that money, do good for him, make his land, his, his, his realm bigger. And that's what Jesus wants for us. He's going to trust us with lots of things of value, blessings, Talents is a, is a word that means two things. In the olden days, in this story, it meant money. But to us, it means all the things that were, God gave us to make us good at things. He gave us a talent for singing, a talent for smiling, a talent for making people laugh, a talent for caring, a talent for spotting people who are lonely and and. and befriending them. He may have given you a talent for music, which other people would love to hear. He may have given you a talent for studying and for being good at science, which one day might lead to you helping people in some great um, invention. There are so many gifts and, and talents that he gives us. He gives us families who can be very supportive to us so that's something we could pass on he gives us a roof over our head a, a, perhaps a good education that we could use to for the good of mankind there are so many gifts and blessings he gives us and like the master in the story jesus was trying to get people to realize whether when they're given these things when they're trusted these very valuable gifts that our Lord, our Father, Jesus, he wants us to use them for the good of his kingdom, to make his word known far and wide, to look after his people. He wants us to do his work with those talents, with those valuable gifts. He wants us to spread his love his kindness and help perhaps the needy, the poor, 
with all the resources we have, not necessarily money, but with our kindness, with our love, maybe with our minds, our cleverness, to think of ways of fundraising, to use the wonderful gift of a family that maybe could support you in that, to get your cake sales off the ground or um, raising money for children in need this weekend. Or, or maybe that the, they would support you to try and think of a way that you could help a neighbour or help somebody who's lonely in school. They can be supportive of you with that. It may be that you have a wonderful talent for music and that you could make a video that you know that you could send to a relative who's on their own at the moment because of coronavirus. And they could help you make that, support you to make that wonderful talent of yours be shown to this person who is really missing you. So there's lots of ways that we can spread Jesus' love using the gifts and talents we have been given. Now there's a wonderful picture on the website, uh, on the bulletin, the very last page we always have a picture for children's liturgy that you can print off and colour. But also, I thought maybe you could make some sort of um, chart in your bedroom or in, on the kitchen wall. And on one side we could put the gifts or talents that we have, that we've been given from Jesus. And on the other side, how you could use it for others and put a tick on either side for each talent that you use or each gift that you think you feel received, you have received from God. And on the other side, put a tick when you've been able to use it for somebody else. So if you've got that wonderful smile and you've been smiling at people and making them smile back at you because that's how your gift multiplies, a bit like the money, how the money doubled in the story when they invested it well. One smile from you can lead to a bigger smile from somebody else. And then they smile at somebody else because they're happy. And so it goes on. There's like a chain reaction. And you get hundreds of smiles then from one smile from you. One good deed from you can make somebody so happy they decide to do a good deed for someone else. And so the chain reaction goes on. And before you know it, one good deed from you has led to a hundred good deeds. One good idea from you could lead to lots of people in your class thinking that's a good idea. And maybe you all get together and multiply that good idea for fundraising or for something to cheer people up or something to do wonderful things in school. But you can grow these gifts. You can make them bigger and bigger and bigger, just like in the story. And Jesus will be so pleased. So whether you want to make a chart or whether you want to do some colouring, it's entirely up to you. But I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week and use your talents wisely. Jesus will always be grateful for the love that you spread. Goodbye. I'll see you again soon.